So by now, you should be a pro at modeling. We've gone over how to model systems using the transfer function and also in the state space domain. So now we're going to try to use those models. What can they tell us about the system? And to start with, there's a few different ways to break down a system. We're going to start with transfer function, so in the time frequency domain. And we're going to look at the poles and zeros of a system. So we're going to define that right now. So in a transfer function, we usually have, so we'll say of a plant, some transfer function. We have usually a numerator and a denominator. And usually it's something, let's say, a s squared plus b s plus c. And on the bottom you have something like alpha s squared plus beta s plus, I'm just going to use gamma because I don't know what the c is in Greek. All right, so we have some system here, sorry, equals. And we are going to use some expressions here. So we're going to look at the poles and zeros of this system. So what are those things? Well, okay, what is a pole? All right, so a pole is essentially the value of s that makes this system, the transfer function, go to infinity. So value of s that makes a transfer function, I'm just going to use tf here, transfer function go to infinity. Okay, So that would pretty much mean the values of s that are the roots of the denominator. Okay, And so we denote a pole as an x, and I'll show you how we plot that in a minute. And then the zeros are essentially the opposite. It is the value of s that makes the transfer function go to zero. So essentially it's going to be the roots of the numerator here. So the value of s that makes this become zero or the value, so that's the zero. And we denote that as a circle. And then the poles are the values of f, s that make this expression, the denominator, zero. So let's just do a quick example. So these are the definitions. We're going to take an example. We're going to use g of s. And we're going to say we did our model, and we figured out our system, and we end up with this transfer function, s plus 2 in the numerator. And we put it in our standard form, so we get s squared plus 5s. So if this is our starting function, we can find the poles and zero of it. So first, let's find, actually let's find the zeros first. So the zeros is going to be whatever makes us zero. So s plus 2 equals zero. Relatively easy, we can see that s equals negative 2 is a zero. So this would be our answer for the zero. And then what about our poles? So we take this expression and we want to make it zero. So s squared plus 5s equals zero. We see we could take an s out of here. So we have s times s plus 5 is equal to zero. So here we actually have two poles. So if s is equal to zero, then that is one of the poles. Or if s is equal to negative 5, we have that expression is also equal to 0. So our poles here would be 0 and negative 5. And our zeros here would be negative 2. And what we can do is actually map these on a what we call a pole zero plot. Okay, so this is our, I'm going to write it up here, pole zero plot. And essentially all we're doing is mapping s on the real and imaginary axis. Imaginary, that looks weird. But, okay, the real and imaginary axis, right? So all we have to do is use these appropriate symbols to map them correctly. 
So we have a zero at negative two. So we go to, we'll say this is, do this. So here is negative five, five here, and about the same here. Okay, so we have negative two is one of our zeros. There's no imaginary component, it's all real. So we keep on the real axis and we go to negative two and we put a circle. So that's our zero at negative two. And then for the poles, remember we use an X, we have S equals zero. So again, only real and well, no imaginary or real components. So just an X, right, at the origin. And then S equals negative five. Again, only a real component, no imaginary. So we would put an X out here. So this is how we would plot our poles and zeros on the uh, pole zero plane. And we're going to talk about this a lot more later, but we're going to use these values to determine how the system acts. So these values can tell us quite a bit about how it would react to the system reacts to a step function or to various changes. So we'll look at that later, but right here we just use our system find these zeros and poles and then plot them on this type of plot.